Yeah, they missed some shots too, but I thought uh, we were really active defensively. Last three games, you know, our defense had taken a vacation, and these last three games has been off the charts. Active hands, deflections, uh, you know, creating turnovers. So uh, when we defend like that, we're pretty good. What's going through your mind when, when Paul hits the ground like that? And did you watch the play? And do you have any new information as to what he's doing? It's his ankle, it's which his is ankle. the good news. Because when he went down, I thought it was his knee. And of course, the Laker fans thought he was gonna, they were going to bring out a wheelchair at some point. <laughs> so uh, they didn't do that. So that was good. Uh, but it's good to, uh, you know, he's going to be out, you know, for a little bit. We don't know how long. And, you know, it's one of those things. But it doesn't seem like it's like season threatening. No, I when he went down, I thought it was his knee because he grabbed his knee. He said he grabbed his knee because he got knee and he hit. The pain was there, but he twisted his ankle. In those moments, I mean, Paul's thirty-eight. He's played eighteen seasons. When he goes down and grabs at his knee, are you thinking? I, mean, I don't. You, I, I know you try to stay in yeah, the moment. Yeah. But does that even flip for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, for a second when he grabbed his knee, I definitely thought, oh boy. And then I'm thinking against the Celtics, you know, so I was thinking no. But, you know, it didn't happen, so that's good. Doc, if he has to miss some time while Blake is coming back, um, how, how important is it for you to, to get Well, it's just not going to happen. I mean, it just keeps happening, so we just can't get the right, you know, it's just been one of those. But our guys, are they're, they're fine. I mean, they just keep playing. We're putting different guys in. Um, we know we got to figure out who we want to start, at, at, you know, where Paul is out and, yeah, it's been one of those years, so there's nothing you can do about it. You just got to keep trying to get healthy for the playoffs. You know, as far as having that two-week period, that's not going to happen. So I've given up on that part. Uh, we have to figure it out another way. Doc, 67 points off the bench by my count for this for this ball game. Can you just try to put into words and kind of lift at that? Yeah, maybe? whatever our bench. Our bench has been good. I mean, you know, from whatever Christmas on, they've been one of the one, two, three in scoring. And uh, But when they're that good uh, and when they get stops, you know, um, that's what I think their improvement has been because they have figured out they get stops, they get to run no plays. You know, they can play in, in random and they enjoy that better than the play. So uh, I think they've gotten hungry to get stops. Doc, you mentioned like total team defense these past three games, but yeah. DeAndre Jordan, 15, 13, and three yeah. blocks tonight. His effort in these past three games. He's alone. been the most dominant player on the floor every night. Uh, but over the stretch, you know, even really since all the way to the holidays too, there's no one that has affected a game as much as he, you know, around the rim. You know, it's funny. I, when we just played, uh, Mike Malone was talking about it, and he said it's amazing how many times guys, it's, you don't get stats for not changing shots because guys just stop driving uh, because he's around. And he's just affecting the game for us, his energy, his activity, uh, and his voice. He's the loudest player on our team uh, with his talk. So he's, he's taken another step defensively uh, this year, and it's been good for us. Doc, you talked about your team defense. Uh, just talk about the play of Isaiah Thomas tonight, especially him dropping 24. Yeah, you know, he, he dropped him our way, though. You know, on the free throw line, uh, not a lot of threes. Uh, we let him go left a couple more times than we really wanted to. I mean, our game plan was, you know, to force him right. Obviously, it was that easy. He wouldn't have been an all-star. So, uh, <laughs> but overall, I'll take how the defense guarded him. You guys signed Paul for this time of year. Um, in a lot of ways. Uh, tonight, did you see a little more bounce in him? And have yeah. you started to see kind of those, like... Yeah, I think he's been working harder and ready. He's, he's ready for the playoffs, you know. And you can see tonight, he's taking people off the dribble. He's got a step back, and then, then he gets injured. So I bet he's thinking, wow, let's, you know, I got to start back over. He didn't think it was that bad, though, I will say that. Uh, I think it's the first time... Uh, Chris Paul's played less than 30 minutes in back-to-back -back games. How beneficial is that, especially this time of year? It's huge. It's huge. I mean, uh, that one stretch um, when Austin was out and right before All-Star break and then right after, he played a ton of minutes. You know, even though his minutes are way down. and um, But that little stretch, I thought, was a hard stretch for him. And, you know, now – Allowing him to play low minutes, back-to-back -back games, uh, going on the road is, is good for us. 
with with Blake coming back and just having like seven games left at that yeah. point, if if three is out of reach and you've protected that four spot, will you start to rest guys like Chris? Yeah, and most likely. Like, yeah, we may do it earlier than that, but. Um, yeah, I mean, again, that's why it's nothing you can do. You'd love them guys to get a rhythm with Blake, but we'll do it in practice, and um, we'll figure it out. So. Thanks, Coach. No, no, these guys have questions. As long as the professor doesn't ask the question, you guys, <laughs> you guys get four questions today. Wow. Just with one. Right, Coach, uh, you had 29 assists on 44 meters yeah. tackles tonight. How, what were you seeing out there that you allowed you to move the ball? That just time? that, you know, simple ball movement too. You know, a lot of times the guy just didn't have it; he just swung it. Um, last game was our second most passes of the year, uh, as far as just actual passes. And my guess is tonight we'll be in that same area. So. Uh, getting our guys to move the ball has been great. When they do it, we're really hard to guard. <laughs> yeah, Doc, um, Jamal Crawford dropping 15 and keeping that tempo up for the team, how important was, was his role in making sure you guys stay up tempo? Jamal's huge for our second unit. Like, if he scores, you know, it allows all the other guys to score easier. You know, when he's struggling, that unit struggles offensively. They're, they're not as reliant on him as they were last year. You know, other guys can get their own shot, which helps. But uh, he's huge for us. Hey, Doc. Uh, a main area of weakness in the past couple of playoffs has been the bench. And with the way the bench is playing right now and the playoffs coming, how do you plan on giving time to the guys when they're playing so well? Well, hopefully they can do what they've done the last two games. But it, it's it's not a concern going into this playoffs, at least until the playoffs start. You just never know, you know, how things work out. But I think we're really deep. I think we can... We have multiple guys at different positions. We have guys that can play different positions too. You know, guys can play multiple positions, which I think will be good for us. Any more? One more? Uh, Doc, so uh, Blake Griffin's coming back in a couple games. Um, how do you think that will affect the chemistry? I don't think it'll affect the chemistry. It may affect our rhythm a, a little bit. Um, you know, we just got to get him in condition more than even our rhythm. And I think that's going to take a while. So thanks, guys. Take care. All right.